Hi, in this chapter 16 tutorial on valuing stocks, we're going to look at how we use the capital asset pricing model to find the value of equity for the weighted average cost of capital. The weighted average cost of capital, as you probably remember, represents the cost to us of using other people's money. When you're a firm, other people's money comes in the form of a loan to us, which we would call debt, or an investment in exchange for ownership of the firm, which we would call equity. And in order for a company to make enough money to satisfy all of its investors, to get the required rate of return that they demand, we need to earn at least the weighted average cost of capital on any investment that we make. So the cost of capital, weighted average cost of capital, contains two elements, the cost contributed from debt and the cost contributed from equity. We're going to start by finding the cost contributed by debt, and in the next tutorial, we'll do the cost contributed by equity. So I'm going to shrink this spreadsheet down a little bit and open up Yahoo Finance and Southwest Airlines data, their balance sheet, income statement, and some key statistics in order to piece together my weighted average cost of capital. So here you're going to probably just want to make sure that you're looking at this actually in YouTube rather than in Moodle's Windows player because you'll want to make it a little bit bigger because I'm going to have to make it a little bit smaller. So where I'm starting here is Yahoo Finance looking at the income statement for Southwest Airlines, ticker symbol LUV traded on the New York Stock Exchange, trading last at 13.34 per share. Um, on April 19th, 2013, which was yesterday. So being that I'm on the income statement and that I'm looking for the cost of debt, I have two things that I need to find, two pieces of information that are going to help me fill in the puzzle that can be found on the income statement. The first is going to be how much interest we paid last year and how much tax we paid last year and what our level of income was before taxes, what our taxable income was. Both of those things together are going to help us figure out our cost of debt. So I'm going to scroll down and here under operating income or loss, I've got my earnings before interest in taxes, I've got my interest expense, I've got my income before tax, and I've got my income tax expense. So first, I'm going to identify my interest expense, $147,000. So that's going to be my interest paid in 2012. Interest expense, one four seven zero zero zero. My income before tax, 685000 And my income tax expense, 264000 All right. Next, I'm going to go to the balance sheet. If we're on our Yahoo Finance page, the balance sheet in this set of options on the left-hand side is down toward the bottom. And on the balance sheet, we can find the balances of debt for both 2012 and 2011. So we need to get the levels of debt in 2012 and 2011 because in order to figure out the percentage interest rate that we're paying, we need to get an idea of what our balance might have been over the course of the year because we'll pay interest on one balance at the beginning of the year and on another balance toward the end of the year as we're paying off debt or accumulating more debt. So we're going to calculate our interest cost based on the average level of debt. So when I go down here to long-term debt, I'm really interested in two numbers. My long-term debt, or debt that I'm paying interest on to lenders, such as bondholders, can be found in two places. Down here with long-term debt, $2,883,000, but the part of it that we're going to need to pay back this year is actually considered a current liability. So this $271,000 is the portion of our long-term debt that we're going to pay back within one year or a business cycle. So for 2012, my long-term debt has two components. It has this $271,000 and it has this 
2,883,000. So I made a mistake here and I want to draw your attention to it because it's important. I'm trying to add 271,000 to 2,883,000 and I can see right away that I didn't add enough zeros. I want to bring this to your attention because you need to start looking critically at the answers that you generate because there's no way I can tell right away that this number isn't right because 271,000 plus 2.8 million is never going to equal 559,000. So I, I can identify right away that that number is incorrect because it's much smaller than I want. So once I add another zero, I get a number that's much more reasonable. And here in my check figures, I get the numbers right away in my, uh, with my get formula so I can double check. Let's compare this to 2011. In 2011, our short current portion was 644,000, and my long-term portion was 3,107,000, so for 3.7 million in debt. So we'll assume that at the beginning of the year we had 3.7, at the end of the year we had 3.1, so during the year we paid some debt off. So we're gonna base our interest rate on the average of those two numbers. So I'm going to average them for an average debt level of 3.4 million. So the next thing that I want to do is calculate my cost of interest. What was my interest rate over that period of time? Well, to get my interest rate as a percentage, I take the amount that I paid and I divide into it the amount of debt that I had, my average debt, which is 4.26%. I want you to give me percentages with a percentage sign after them and two decimal places. So we've got a get formula here and that'll show you the formula. So what we just figured out is that our interest rate, that Southwest Airlines has an interest rate of a, on average four and a quarter percent of the money that they borrow. And that's the information that we need. In order to find our after-tax cost of debt though, which is the relevant number, we need to calculate our tax rate. In other words, how much income tax as a percentage does Southwest pay of its taxable income? So income before tax represents our taxable income, and then that's the tax that we paid. So as a percentage, it's our tax expense divided by the income before tax, or divided by the taxable income, which is 39%. So we pay four and a quarter, a little over four and a quarter percent as an interest rate, and our tax rate is 39%. We're going to use the next tutorial to calculate the weight of debt and equity, the cost of equity, and plug all these things into our weighted average cost of capital equation to figure out the cost of capital for Southwest Airlines.